Um, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's exciting because I know Donna and I have been talking a lot about you know what's out there as far as information to learn from, and unfortunately, things are too basic. You know, they'll say yellow and purple are complementary colors, but that's really not often true. <laughs> Sometimes yellow and purple make green. And, and, and I'm just as complimentary. It's not as even mixing compliments. We already know, we've already had to, that discussion where they're different, but we're trying to create that vibration, that real difference between them, you know, so that they're different colors. So sometimes it's like yellow and blue, and we're gonna go over a bunch of different examples today. And we're gonna look at a piece of art and I'm gonna talk you th through my process of what I'm gonna be doing with it next. And so I'm so excited. And of course I have a fantastic handout with all kinds of examples. I am giving you 60 different tetradic examples to play with. So we're gonna have so much fun. Um, the main thing to understand first, and I, I'm gonna first apologize. I am having the entire first floor of this little tiny townhouse demolished as we speak. So I'm praying the jackhammer doesn't start, but <laughs> it is a renovation rumble around here and hopefully they don't cut off my internet, but so far so good. <laughs> um, when I talk about tetradic harmonies, they really are double complements. It's like when you look at a, the wheel of color and that's that you know wheel of 12 colors, the real basic one, it's two sets of complementary colors and um, so that's really the start of it. When you think about that, it means there's a lot of what they call vibration, visual vibration between these colors. And so that's why it's important to use it properly. I get my thing to stop yakking here, one sec. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, it's gonna be, I'm very excited because there's so much for us to go over, but it's four colors and it can be spaced as a square evenly on that color wheel, or it can be a rectangle, rectangular shape, and you can stretch it. It's just a kind of a four-sided shape. I don't want anything to be rigid that we talk about. It's just a concept and it's where you take it from there and what you do with it. But you essentially end up with two pairs of complementary colors. So they're the most visually opposite vibrating colors on the color wheel and so you create a really dynamic piece but you can use muted colors and there's all kinds of good information out there so when you're using those four colors the best concept in order to create a visual harmony is to let one color be dominant or let one complementary pair be dominant. So it's not four dominant colors. I can't tell you, I'll show you actually a picture later where someone was talking about tetradic and they were doing all four equal. And I'm like, I don't know where to look. <laughs> it kind of hurts a little bit, but it depends. I'm sure there's a certain pop that you can get out of that. Um, so it's a lot of fun. It gives you a lot of possibilities for variation. And once again, if one's dominant, um, and then the other way, as long as it's it's balanced visually, it works, but you're gonna have, we're gonna have fun. So let's get into some visuals. Let me bring up my stuff. I'm gonna share the screen. Don't laugh. I'm just gonna and share. And also while you're doing that, I'm just gonna chime in and say that some of these color combinations seem like they would be very difficult to work with. And some of you that are actually in my Patreon, you have been working when I do these color studies in these tetradic color combos and just didn't know. So um, I, I also wanna caution you that don't be like, oh, no, because it is literally in these color combinations, whether they're mixed or whether they're next to each other, that the pow in your color will happen. So I'm sorry, just had to say that. No, that's that's exactly what we're here for. So I'm going to give you some nice examples. Okay. So the tetradic color army, as I said, there's four points of color. And this color theory kind of stuff, it works in everything. Logo design, furniture, you know, uh, the clothing that you wear, you can make these choices in everything. This isn't just pertaining to our visual arts as far as with paints. But as you can see here, the pop of color on this amazing, you know, living room set and those same colors then applied to a watercolor piece. And look at how dynamic that is. But once again, because the orange is like the dominant color, your eye kind of goes and it flows and then it goes to the orange, which is the warm color. And then typically to that purpley 
tealy stuff because those are the cool colors. And that's the generic concept is that they were complementary pairs are usually a generically warm and a generically cool color. And I say generic because it depends on the pigment, but the general idea is an orange and you know a purple, <laughs> you know? So they just a purple or a blue. It just makes a difference and it gives your eye something to go, ooh, and start looking through that picture. So, you know, uh, speak up. What, what do you see first when you look at that tree picture? Like Donna, what do you see? Um, I see the grassy area and then I want to look up, which I find really interesting because I want to look the way the tree grows. Mm -hmm. um, and, and obviously, like I see the orange because it's a bigger space, but then the dark center of the tree pulls me through and then I just kind of, yeah. And then we I find up. happiness in the teal. Yep, we go up, we go in, yep, and then and then down, and then we start looking around. So, you know, they've done a good job of doing the rule of thirds there and having, you know, their subject matter that they want you to pay attention to is at one of those intersections, and it just pulls you through. But visually stunning. I would never have thought to use those colors. And so I oh, I have to send a link to this person's website. Ibrahim, he's amazing. I'm sorry I don't have that on there. I'm actually in a in a round robin, I'm going to show you some some pieces in a little bit where um, I'm going to be talking about, but you know, we're talking about harmonies. It's just amazing. And it's not your typical thing. But if you sell your work, can you imagine how something like this will jump out at someone at an art fair? They'll just be like, they'll look right at it. <laughs> you know, it immediately pulls in the eye. And so it doesn't have to be bright colors. It can be more muted colors. And so that's just an example. And so, I, that's why I said before we did this, that when you look at those colors right there, orange, yellow, purple, blue, you're like, like, you know, this just doesn't um, say anything. But I think once you start, if you are doing the color studies with me and you start playing with them, you start figuring out when colors lean towards biases, when like, like even this, it's that turquoise in there variation of the blue, which is literally the blue and the yellow kind yeah. of mixed together that gives you that. But it's in those spaces in between those four colors also that make this dynamic, mm -hmm. especially in like if I look at the sky, there's a little purple in the orange sky and and it's it's not so. Um, rigid, like you were saying, there is muted tones and there's different values and all that kind of stuff. So when we talk about these tetradic color harmonies, they honestly are color palettes that do not pull me in, which is why I was never using them. Mm -hmm. And now that I know, I can't stop. Well, and this, as you can see, the compliments, the, the, the blue, you know, like the cerulean blue deep, that, that turquoisey color and the orange, those are compliments. And then the purple and the acid yellow green, those are compliments. But when that yellow and that turquoise get together, they make that tealy, that light greeny thing. And as we look at these and you're like, oh, that's ugly, remember this picture, because what I'm gonna be showing you are what I call full mass tone images of color. So they're gonna be color blocked and they may look ugh, but when you think about them mixed with medium and how much water and you know how, how you do it, they're not gonna be that saturated. So you know there are parts of this that are very saturated and there are parts that are just blending together with their near complements and making that beautiful mud, which is everything. <laughs> so you know, th this is just a great example, but um, I just wanted to show you that. So now, we're going to move on so you can see. So tetradic harmonies. Can everyone see my circles? OK, so you can see these are all they all have like, you know, that little X X marks the spot in every one of them. And sometimes these these are my personal mixes that I've created, a, you know, for color harmonies. And sometimes they're stretched a little bit and sometimes they're rectangles and sometimes they're squares. And sometimes I just zhuzh it a little bit because I like something a little bit better. And this is just how I've mapped them out. But it all starts with just figuring out what's a good visual complement and going from there and trying to get things. Typically I start with everything kind of being at the same value and then I may zhuzh one color up or down using my neutral grays, if we remember how those work. <laughs> so. You know, that way you don't end up with um, what I call ice cream, which I'll show you in a minute, like this one up here. It's like, oh, they're all light. <laughs> you might want to mess with one of those, you know, and so stretch it out. So it's just fun. You don't have to stay in the same value. 
to more to be more specific i just want to talk about these two these are your uh amazingly technical kind of graphs but each one of these colors this not a this is not a color wheel that you could buy at the store this is sally lynn's golden colors on a circle so each one of those is a golden color she is yeah. masterminded <laughs> golden colors into a color wheel well, I didn't want, I don't want to ever discuss something with you and just say yellow and purple. I want to be specific so that, you know, we are talking about tube colors and yeah, tube colors aren't necessarily what we use straight out of the tube, but it is where we start. And that's for me, the point of a tetradic harmony. I'm starting with those colors and I'm seeing where they go and making one, one or one, one pair dominant from that. And it just goes from there. So not rigid but also way more specific, which is why I think you'll like this little worksheet. So here yes. is the gallery of yuck. <laughs> because initially you look at it and you're like, uh, but this is gonna stretch you in so many unique and interesting ways because I'm taking things and I'm doing them at the same value and you can zhuzh it up and down. As I said, these are mass tones, but they're really, they are mathematically correct in their visual harmony. So if you want something really dynamic, that's what complementary visuals and tetradics are about. So get something really dynamic. And once again, going back to, you know, this, to be able to create something like that, you know, and whether or not it's representational, like a tree or abstract with just, you know, shapes and, and mark making, it all is the same. And for each, I've basically done 60, 61 colors or so of these so that you can actually just go a through. Few. Just a few. Um, I'm a geek. Oh, there's ice cream, light magenta. Yeah. And that's why I said like sometime, and, and so there are many of artists that just put out things like this without the name of the color, which mm -hmm. is why I get so frustrated. Like, I just want you to tell me what tube of paint I pick up. Let me take out these four tubes of paint and play. And so what I love about Sally Lynn is because she is a fluent golden language speaker, she's able to take these, I would say, relatively ugly samples of four colors next to each other, but put colors to them so that I can make a determination about right. how do they look? What do I like best about it? Because I will tell you, honestly, the colors that have surprised me the most have been the ugliest colors in the tetradic harmony. Absolutely. And that's, it's things that, that's why I'm pulling them out today. I don't want to make this easy on you. I want to show you something that's going to stretch you as much as it's stretched me as an artist, because I would never have grabbed these and gone to make a piece when I first started. And now I'm almost universally going to this, the complementaries or the tetradics, because it's like, yeah, I want some punch. I want this to really, you know, sing. And I know how to manipulate it and use enough of each thing. But, you know, Donna, you and I have talked extensively about different samples we've seen out there with teaching and in books where they just make a pretty, a pretty color field. And they say, here's, here's some inspiration. And you're like, but how did you make that? Oh, there goes the saw, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> So hopefully that isn't too bad. Um, so we just want to be really specific with you and give you tools that you can use and discuss, you know, on the online, on the group, et cetera. You know, we're always there to help answer questions and we want you to post your art. And you, and know. you will make this available for patrons over on Patreon, correct? Yeah. I'm assuming. I am, you know, I'm sending it to you. It's your handout. <laughs> so you will have all five pages of these dorky, but really fantastic colors. And what I like is I really did, I tried to get, I tried to be organized and put things that were near colors next to each other so you could see the subtle shifts. Because I've really done the math, if you will, on these. I like that, that this is you trying to be organized. So you're like, I tried to be organized. <laughs> you're funny, but I know I, I'm a geek that way. And so all right, so hopefully this will be helpful and useful information for you to take from here. Um, then now I'm going to get specific. And I am I'm probably cutting this pretty short today because I know that they're going to start jackhammering and there's just no reason I should put people with headphones through that. So um, I'm, I'm going to give you a specific example. 
Um, first of all, Donna, shall we tell them what this is? Oh, you're muted. Yes, yes. I, I think we we should tell them that this, there's peek. more to come. <laughs> yeah, that is a little sneak peek. It, they just happen to have a bit of data to share with all of you and artwork and compliments and harmonies and it's coming. <laughs> so we're excited about it. The color collab is, is moving into bigger spaces. Just know there's something that might have something like this in the future coming. Maybe and it might be the best thing so that you'll that. ever have. And I think colleges will be using it. <laughs> yeah. We're we're very excited about it. And it's it's sprung from these sessions with you guys. And so something good coming out of all of this. I'm really happy. It has truly been a color collab. So how do I use this? I'm going to jump to the me camera for a minute. Hello. <laughs> Back to the Brady Bunch. Okay, you guys can see me okay? And definitely use speaker view if you, you know, go up top to the, usually it's the right hand corner, it says view if you want to go to speaker view to make me bigger. Not because I'm looking really great today, because I'm tired, but <laughs> because I want you to see something. So I'm a golden artist educator. And during this, you know, lockdown and all that stuff, um, what I've been doing is working with other artists and we've been doing sort of a round robin if you will um one artist starts a piece and puts something on it and writes down what they did on a sheet of paper and then mails it to the next person and they do something and the next person and they do something and then i'm the last person on this round and so i have this wow and it's interesting to me i love this you know, I'm not saying anything about this art style. I love this because these are such a challenge to me because this is someone, people with different art styles. This was completely abstract and then someone went representational. <laughs> and, you know, and, and at some point it's like, so what do I do with this? And what I do to add my bit is all about color. I just need to tie it together, make it cohesive. So looking at this, let me see, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like I'm it's not that bad. I'm not having tummy troubles. So looking at Mr. Blue Jay here, I thought I'm going to make this into a tetradic harmony because it's awfully close because we already have like an anthroquinone blue going in here. And then there's a quinacridone crimson. Can you see like the pinks? I know video is sometimes not so great. And the Naples yellow hue is very dominant over here. And there's a bit of a quinacridone. I think that's quinacridone nicolazo gold from the notes, but close enough to the Naples yellow hue that I see them kind of as the same visually. So what I needed to add to this was the other complementary pair. So the blue and the yellow are a complementary pair. The quinacridone magenta's complementary visual pair is a green. And because this is a very muted color and this is a muted color, I'm gonna go with chromium oxide green. And, you know, just looking at the piece, I'm like, I can easily add foliage in here. You know, these blue leaves, I'm just gonna go over and bring in some green there and some light bits up here. And so that we can kind of fill this in, you know, so it gets a little bit more going on with it. But that's how I, how I typically take a piece like this and work it. And in, even in my own, you know, in my own studio, when I'm working on something and I get stuck, it's always about usually tetratics first to figure out what to do with it. So that's my take on this piece, is I'm gonna be going for the chromium oxide green to make it a true tetratic harmony. And chromium oxide green being a gray green, it's not bright. And it's not what you would consider a pretty color, but it's gonna make this whole thing just pop, you know, and come together, so. Debbie had a question and I tried to answer it, but I know you'll answer it better. It was some of those tetradics have a fifth color and I thought it was because it's on the same line of the X, right? Correct, it's on the same spoke. Yeah, absolutely. That is why I do that. Um, sometimes I'm just not loving it. And so I'll stretch it a bit. I'm like, I really want just that yellow looks okay with that blue, but boy, it would look so much better if it had like a deeper value. So that's where I'm moving in. And let me show you something. Great question. Um, this is gonna get geeky, don't be afraid. <laughs> or be very afraid, be very afraid. Okay. All right, this is 
Golden Artist colors, all of their colors, all of the tube colors. And this is via what we call you know, sort of saturation by hue and by saturation. So you can see the colors that are least saturated are in the middle, they're sort of desaturated, more gray colors, darker, and the most, you know, the, then they have the value of the brighter ones coming out, okay? So the more saturated colors on the outside, the less saturated colors on the inside. So that's where, when I feel a little stuck, I start going in and out on the spokes there. So if I've got like a light orange, then I might bring in a pyrrole orange or cadmium orange or something, or even just mix it. But I like to show that that's, that's what I'm doing. So that's why I brought up five. Boy, these people are noticing everything. So this is about saturation. Now the next wheel, sorry, more sawing. This is about value. And so value is different than saturation. So on the wheel to, I think the first one I pulled up, the one to the left, I don't know if it's on the left for you. The first one I pulled up with the deeper saturated colors, you'll see things like the light magenta is all the way in because it's not saturated. But on the second wheel, it's all the way out because it's a really bright valued color. So it, it like shows up a lot. So I'm always looking at the values, which I've told you about, you can find on the Golden website. It, it gives you the Munsell values for a color so you can see you know, and, and gauge it based on what we talked about, about neutral grays. But so that's why I sometimes add something to a spoke. So I'm gonna pull up some of those again. Such an observant group. So uh, let's find one in particular. This one, teal, we like teal. <laughs> okay, so teal has five colors. So let's see what that one looks like. Who knows which, what I did with that one. I'm always messing with them. Um, teal, there it is. So yes, that's exactly what I did here. I don't know if I can blow this up a little bit. Let me try. There we go. So with the teal wheel, you can see that I brought in the light phthalo blue or green. <laughs> My visual isn't good. I think it's the light phthalo, yeah, the light phthalo blue, because I just wanted something a little lighter. It felt dark because I had that really dark green going on. And then against the teal, I wanted something with a little more of a punch. So like I said, I try to go along the spoke, things that make sense together, you know, in color harmony. So I know that you don't have like these spokes with you, but that's why it's there. Um, and I, that's why I've done all the work for you. So the nice thing is that you're gonna have colors if you're gonna have this thing as a PDF, you'll be able to search through that and find all the places that have light magenta and like see, you know, the different places where it exists. That's why I want you to have the document so you can see where I'm using things. So things aren't just listed once, but that's why I do that because sometimes it just isn't punched enough. So it's still tetradic, you know, but it's just adding, and that can be done via mixing to add that other color and get more visual interest. You could just take your neutrals and pull it up, or you can just scrap a tube color that makes sense. I hope that answered that question. Yes. My God. <laughs> so the end result being that, you know, you can end up with something that, you know, has just a little bit more of a, a light value somewhere or a darker value. And that's all we're doing. We're taking usually just one and manipulating the darker or the lighter on it, just, just to try and once again, bring focus to a color if it's necessary. And I did that on here because that's how I really use it. And I wanted you to see that it's flexible. Any more questions? All right. Debbie said, uh, great explanation. Thanks. Okay, good. I hope that helps. I know I get a little geeky sometime. So that's how I'm working with color. And like I said, the tetradic harmonies, I, as you, I pulled up this example because it's not like a perfect square at all, this lower corner here that I'm using for this piece of art. It's what in my own work, I've discovered that works better or what I like the most because anthraquinone blue at its mass tone, as you can see up here in this corner, 
is really, 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 really dark. But when you actually work with it, depending on whether you're tinting or glazing, it, it actually lightens up. And so it felt like it needed some balance. So I started pulling colors out with just a, a lighter value to them to bring that one together instead of it all being dark. I think the other interesting thing too is when we think of something like anthraquinone blue, I don't ever think of it that dark. I think of it how I use it. So it's much lighter. And I think that's where like the techie stuff kind of comes in. Like anthraquinone blue is relatively so dark, but I might use it as that one tenth tint. Yes. And that's why that knowing what colors on that cross to pick gives you kind of like a a step ahead so yes. you're not just making all dark muddy colors it gives you like the option like that yellow green that's in there is such yes. a better color than like a sap green yes and so that that's what we're i'm trying to help you with the the science of it so that you can like make those decisions and it's all muscle memory at that point you know you start mixing and you realize what you like and you take notes and and that ends up being in a series of work and then you find another color you like and a whole other thing opens up. But it is flexible. And I think I'm going to come to an end <laughs> just because it's getting super loud here. But um, I, I hope uh, we can continue discussion both on Patreon and on the, the Facebook group, of course. And I will be sending the video and of course all the handouts to Donna. I will put this over on my Patreon and then open up for any questions as well. Sally Lynn is also a patron over there, so she will see all of your questions. Yes. Um, so we'll just, just because you are getting a destruction of your downstairs happening, I think that makes sense. But um, yeah. we'll continue these conversations because I think they're important. Okay, well, I'm going to leave this open so you guys can do any Q&A or discussion among yourselves. I'm just going to oh. turn off my audio and camera because I want to leave it on. I don't want to stop you guys, but it's definitely not good for me to be here. So, okay, well, that's cool. Um, if anybody does have questions with Sally Lynn still kind of here, she can answer in the chat. Or if you have just questions, maybe I can do my best and try to answer. <laughs> of course, Is I always. There anything in particular that you'd like me to leave up on the screen? I think I think we're we're good. I think a lot of times people uh, might formulate their question after, but I do see. So when we work with complementary colors, if I'm hearing you correctly, it's about the starting tube color and not complements of the mix color. That is a great comment. I'm going to try to answer that. But if you think I screw it up, Sally Lynn, jump in. So, um, yes, it's it's knowing where to start. I think that is the biggest hurdle. And I, you know, again, I come to it more of a practical application. Just tell me what four tubes to pull out and I can do anything with it, but just tell me what will work best. And then those four tubes, when I start to do my color studies, I start mixing them all together. So maybe out of those four colors, I might have 20 colors. Or maybe on some mixes, I might only have six that I think are viable colors. Maybe maybe when I mix them, I get 10 different variations of gray and good to know, but maybe I don't need them. But yes, it starts with those four. And then certainly you can add other colors if you're working, if you're like, but I want a fifth. Um, but I think it's just working within this most color bang for your time combinations of colors you know it i kind of refer to sally lynn because she gives me the information i don't have and probably the information that would hurt my head if i tried to figure out but she loves that and she has it and then handing it off with just pick up these four colors next and see what you can do i find that exhilarating so yes yeah, sometimes you mix them together and you get you know six to 10 other colors you didn't even know about. And then you start playing with the biases. And those of you that may not um, be patrons over on Patreon, I'll show you what I mean about playing with the biases. So um, I probably should pick up a tetradic color palette. I think that was one of them. Um, is that one of them, Sally Lynn? Give me a thumbs up. I think it was. Okay, so these four colors, I've got a uh, phthalo blue green shade and the opposite of blue is gonna be uh, yellowish orange. And I have yellow ochre and then quinacridone crimson and phthalo green yellow shade. So we've got four different colors here, but look at that pop 
of that piece. Now, clearly those four colors on their own make me want to throw up a little bit in my mouth. They're gross. Nobody looks at those tubes of color and goes, oh my God, I'm going to paint the best thing ever, but it's in between. So down here are the biases. And what those are, are basically, you can do 50-50 mix of the color. And then if you lean it towards the one side or lean it towards the other side, you actually discover all the colors you really get from mixing them. And these are more the, sorry, 50-50 mix of the colors. And so that's why these tetradic color harmonies are so impactful because this is what you can get from just four tubes. Okay, and I say four, but I do add white which is not a color, so it doesn't count. But um, that's what you can get, that pop, that pow of painting with really ugly colors. Like even on their own, like nobody picks up quinacridone crimson and goes, this is not gonna look like blood at all because it totally looks like blood when you use it. Um, but it makes a great pink. It makes a great pink. And that's probably another really important thing, finding out what color makes a great pink. So well, I had one thing that I wanted to comment on because I think someone was asking about complementary and mixing. So let's just let's just take that anthroquinone blue for a moment. The visual harmony for that color is usually like a yellow oxide. It's kind of a dark, muddy yellow, but that is not the mixing complement. If you wanted to mix it to neutralize it, you would be using a vat orange. And I think that's what most of us think about when we think about blue and orange, you know, those are, those are complementary colors, but visually it's actually not, it's a yellow ochre that is a complement to that color, but mixing wise, it happens to be the orange in this case where you mix those together and you get, you basically take that orange and make it gray. So think about an orange sitting on a table and then the shadow falls and you just need to make it look you know, less light is hitting there. That's what a mixing complement does for you. Okay, it's so much better than adding a black or anything. It'll, it gives you, the orange is still there all the way through. It's just, you know, getting darker and darker and darker and darker until it comes to a gray. That's mixing complements. But as I said, with this piece, I'm talking until they start sawing, <laughs> I didn't want to use that yellow oxide. I really wanted to have it, I could see that it was just a little more lighter to use the Naples yellow. So I'm just flexible. I stretched it out and brought something in with a lighter value. I hope that answers the question about and color. I think some of the confusion actually comes in and we're so used to color wheels that are Roy G. Biv. None of a color, if you've probably never seen a color wheel that has anthraquinone on it or yellow oxide, you know what I mean? So really the color wheel isn't a Roy G. Biv. It is much bigger and it's, it's not just pick a blue, any blue. If you look at anthraquinone blue, it's almost black. It's, it's not even represented on the color wheel at all. So that's why some of these things you're like, but no, the opposite of blue is, is orange. Yes, if you went to uh, the Florida, University of Florida, is that the Gators? If you went to University of Florida and the only blue and the only orange you had in your life were those two oranges, yes. Those are your compliments, your opposites. But That's in why real life, sports teams are like that in Christmas and sports teams, you know? Yeah. I mean, if in real life, that's not really how color happens, you know? And and like when you and I think the other thing that was cool about that painting that you showed, you know, just the idea. And sometimes I need those kicks in the butt, like that's an orange tree. Like in my mind, trees are green. And now my whole painting is dictated by the green tree. And in this one, it was a flip on color, but it didn't even make me skip a beat to say, oh, that's a tree and a skyline. Like, so that's so I important, Donna, because I think a lot of people don't understand that even a representational painter as an artist, you're not trying to, I mean, you could be trying to recreate that tree exactly, but we're actually abstracting everything. We're deciding what color we want to apply to it. And people are still saying, yes, that's a tree. <laughs> you know, so there's never any rules about what color something is. You Do know? you want to um, let Victoria in on the bad news? She says, I'm looking for anthraquinone blue and I can't find it. 
just as it is happening with every other industry and the reason why I had to fly down just to get an oven, <laughs> it's every industry is being hit by supply chain issues right now and Golden is no different. Uh, right now, it, it's actually been going on since June of 2020. The PB60 pigment is constrained and that means that we don't have anthraquinone blue and it hasn't been around for about a year now actually. It's been, even the stores are selling out. Um, I do have, I'm actually just put on my website the other day, mixing for, you know, a way to fake it. <laughs> so I made up a recipe that is visually really close to the mass tone and all of the tints. So that is on my Facebook and I'll send Donna a link for that. But that affected not only anthraquinine blue, but also permanent violet dark mm. <laughs> and hooker's green. And so, who doesn't love to say hooker's green? I know that poor man. <laughs> so it's just, um, you know, that's, that's just something that's going on in the industry. It won't be permanent. It won't be forever, but it is affecting, you know, even the industry right now, even just lids and containers. I mean, Sherwin Williams, <laughs> I'm having things painted here. Sherwin Williams had a lot of plants that were in Texas that because of the pipe freezing and all the ice and the storms down there, they lost, I think, 50% of their production capacity. So it's happening in different ways to everybody. But just, you know, give grace. You'll, you'll, you'll try to find it. Know that your art supply stores aren't lax in ordering it. They simply can't get it. And it's not even online at this point. So, and I think uh, Christine right wants now. to show a painting. Oh, yes. so Christine will make you big. Can you see her, Sally? And I think you might have to. Oh, Christine. Broussard? Yes. OK. I will make her spotlight. Voila, ooh. ooh. So what's, what's missing? So um, you've got blue and orange. So it looks more like a complimentary painting, right, Sally Lynn? It's complimentary, but I, I mean- well, I see I purple think, and yellow. I yeah. need some purple here, maybe. I think that's exactly what you need. Why do you think you something's missing? Value. Uh, well, li listening to you, and looking again at your four colors, I feel that perhaps in the body I could do a hint of uh, of purple, perhaps. Yes, the shadows. The shadows could be that hint of purple. That would be perfect for her on her figure, definitely. And maybe right. a shadow, maybe a shadow falling behind her or something too. You know, in, in here. Yeah, just something on on whatever, or just her. Where I started. So a little trick that I learned when we're talking about color, the real thing, like they say color gets all the credit, but value does all the work. So one of the things I would tell you, I can't necessarily tell from here, but I bet you, you can amplify the value. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take a picture of it and then turn it black and white. Okay. If all of your color seems to be the same gray, you don't have enough kick. And I know that you have black in there, but I, and I see that as the distinction, but I feel like your colors, but it's so hard to tell on a camera screen, but I feel like your colors might all be in the same range of the value scale. I agree. Yes. So maybe yes. if you had like something like um, the quinacridone burnt orange or quinacridone nickel azo gold, something that's like a rich rusty color complementing mm -hmm. your oranges. And then maybe like, um, a thalo turquoise thalo or, turquoise. or something that is a darker version of the blues in there, or maybe even just a dark purple that might give enough, um, pow. Yep. And if you don't have those colors, you can always use the neutral grays to play with the colors you have and darken their value yes. and see how that works. I do that. Yeah. Thank you. Yay. All right. I had one more thing I wanted to share with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do I un the shadow? Like it's okay, but it's my darling. Okay. Replace spot. Ah, hello. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to share the screen here real quick. I had something else I wanted to show you. So when I went out to Google and looked at tetrads, and this is this is kind of like my. It's not a don't. It's a but it's a what you will see and what you think of when you see a tetradic color scheme is this kind of evenness, 
which is from, you know, many of these are good, some are bad, it doesn't matter. When I look at this, the problem with this video is that they're just showing an even oh, amount of every color. Well, okay. And so that's why your eye doesn't know where to go. And so, as I, as I said before, you're gonna try and take, you know, one color and make it more dominant or one complementary pair and make it more dominant to make it work. And so if you just go on Google and, you know, I, you know, this is what I, what I searched, I'll paste that in the chat because <laughs> I was very specific to try and get some really good examples for you. And it's just surprising, you know, there's really not a whole lot out there, but, you know, look at this double complementary right there. I would actually tell them to look not for the tetradic color, but tetradic art. Wow. Wow. Kind of like the piece that you did or that you showed with that orange tree. Mm -hmm. Because I think that you're right. There's a lot of. How many? Okay, samples of tetradic. There's a lot of. You, you need that graphic punch. punch. Um, oh, yes, sorry. Um, there's a lot of art that is too literal. And it doesn't have the same impact. Like I'm looking at this horrific rose. Oh my God, I hope it's not somebody in the chat. Um, but I'm looking at this rose and yes, it's a great example of a tetradic colorway, but it's not real engaging, alluring, titillating. You don't know where to look. Yeah. Cause you're kind of looking at all of it. And that's why we talked about it. We want visually you want not the balance of all four but you want something to be more dominant so that you either you know have the one or two of them be more dominant in the structure so that you don't end up with this because this doesn't really work um but you know you'll see there are some good examples here and i like to search for the good and the bad in my mind it's all subjective but it does help you learn because you're like oh maybe if they did more of this or more of that and you, you know actually Critiquing without critiquing <laughs> is wonderful because you can look at it and they don't even know you're looking at it. You're like, gosh, if I just did, if it had more of this, I would love it. So it's inner amazing. voice critique. Thank God people put their work out there, even though, you know, I don't, I don't want to critique them. So please don't go on their blog and say, oh, if you just added more of this, I'd like it. Yeah. Don't find out who did that rose and tell them Donna said. Don't do that. Um, does anybody have, I, I, I know that this is a lot to take in. It always feels like it's like an, like an aha moment with Sally Lynn, but does anybody have other questions as far as these palettes? I really think that this has really helped me choose colors. They're all being quiet. They're all quiet. <laughs> They're all rocking in a corner going, anthroquinone on blue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I'm hoping this will help you because I know for my own, when I, when I get a block and that seems to happen a lot these days, <laughs> mixing colors helps me through that. And also just playing, I literally, I, I have, I was playing around with this idea the other day and I literally was taking that um, chart that I had with the, the four or five colors. And I cut out a piece of stencil material, which I can't find because my stencils are all over here, <laughs> but literally like different, different amounts of a bar to kind of play around with the bar graph of how much, you know, I literally had equal amounts of two and lesser amounts of the others. And I would flip it back and forth and go, which one do I like better? And, you know, I would even also cut them up into strips <laughs> and rearrange them and, you know, see what they look like differently. So it, you know, just, Print it out. I'm sorry for your inkjet, <laughs> but it is fun to play around with them and see what you can make out of it. And it's very good for freeing up your head. It becomes a lot more about fun. <laughs> All in. So otherwise, um, we'll put this out on Patreon, but if you're coming up with questions, feel free. Don't be shy because we're not shy here. Oh, yay. Someone said this will be great for my AP students. I love hearing that. Oh, I see Victoria. Were you waving because you said that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I really do think that um, the color, the in-depth color, like you guys getting in on this color collab, it's kind of going to prepare you for, 
for the big pow because you'll understand a lot more about what you're looking at. But it really is like you becoming a colorist at this point because you're understanding really. I mean, I at least I'm I'm speaking for you from myself, but I just thought, oh, color wheel, opposite colors. Oh, yellow, orange, that's a thing. Um, and green, yellow. And and I understood it, you know, perceptively, I guess, but I, I didn't really intellectualize the idea of what that translated to in the colors. And now that I do know that I eat like I have bins, the way I organize my colors is I just have like, this is my green bin. And when I go into this green bin, I now know if I'm looking for a yellow green, a blue green. And I know that because of, like you said, muscle memory, like I'm, the more I do it, it's just like playing an instrument or learning a language. The more you do it, the more you know what to do. And every once in a while I'll send Sally Lynn something and she's like, oh my God, that was a great color. That was the right color to pair with that. How did you know? And I'm like, I did it. Good job. Look. <laughs> I saw someone ask about, is there a golden color wheel? No, there is not. At least not from golden. I have created that myself. And that's part of this, this whole project that Donna and I are working on. But I mean, you hear it here first. It, it, something's coming. Um, this was a great question by Marianne. She said, when you say one to two colors, should it be should be dominant should it be opposite colors or complementary colors well they're opposite so they are. what i guess so you can choose one of any of the colors but if you're going to choose more than one make it the opposite so a, a, either a pair of complements or one of the colors whichever one you like should be the more dominant of it and that doesn't have to be you know two and one and one and one it could be three of this and two of, I mean, it doesn't have to be equal at all. Yeah, Donna's, I'm gonna- So spotlight. just going back to what you were saying, um, the opposites here, I chose blue and purple as the dominant colors and the pinkish and green and orange, yellow, kind of to be the sub, sub colors. So um, I don't, I didn't really think about it when I was painting, but when I looked at it, it kind of made sense after, but certainly just, I don't even know if it matters if you can finagle it. Like, I think there are no rules. No, so if, stretch it. it. Yeah. If you just decided to play around, you'll know immediately like, the, like a sucker punch. Like if I would have made the background with a red table and a green wall, we all would have been like, oh, bad choice. Um, you okay, know, so kind of whether you- those 50, yeah, 50, 50, those right. two four squares of equal amounts of color or that rose that we saw earlier that is not what you're trying to aim for you don't want equal equal will never work well unless maybe you're doing a logo design and then go <laughs> but that was a good question yeah I, I would say um don't put the like like in that like I, the color is purple and yellow don't do the background yellow and the table purple you know keep one smaller one bigger but you never know because you might come you up with know. the best yellow. Yeah, as long as they're not without four and equal everything parts. in your life has to be that color. Yeah, as long as it's not four equal parts, let let one shine and uh, see what happens. But that's what's beautiful about it. It's paint. We can paint over it. Will your new exciting news color lab be a part of the Patreon? Well, assuredly. Uh, in a lot of ways, it will, and it will continue to be. Um, but this is even bigger than the Patreon. Um, but certainly being a patron will give you inside stuff. Since both Sally Lynn and I are on there. All right, any other questions? Confessions? Those are always fun. Well, I'm going to jump off, but I'll stay. I, I'm just going to turn off the recording now, I think. I think I think everybody's kind of being camera shy, but um, I think it's a probably a good place to end it. And um, we'll, we'll put the replay, all the handouts over on Patreon, certainly in that post. And at any time, if you want to reach out, uh, Sally Lynn, would you throw in your personal email address or website and stuff in here so that um people if they have questions that are beyond me um they can ask you directly but also on patreon we'll keep that comments open and and just 
as you watch it, as new people are going to watch it, they're going to have questions. And I just kind of feel like this was a really important thing to talk about, just knowing that there is an X on the color wheel, because I think <laughs> that's not a term I ever learned. Tetradic would have said to me three. And when I learned what it was, I was like, oh, that's the best of every world. <laughs>